Greetings to all the learners. Namaste. My name is Milin Mahajani and I am an independent software consultant. Today's session deals with the types and attributes of information and it is from the first unit of the first block of CIT 002. What we are going to see in this block or in this session today is how many ways we can look at information, how do we look at different types of information and what are the characteristics of information in each of these perspectives. One perspective could be that we look at information based on the hierarchical level at which an organization uh, receives the information. For example, you can have top management, the senior management of an organization. The kind of information and the characteristics of the information that they need is very different from what would be needed by someone at the middle layer or someone who is in the front line who is doing day to day operations. There can be other perspectives using which we look at information, but in today's session we are looking at the need or the types of information from an organization's uh, hierarchical level. For example, consider a bank. What is the normal constitution or the organization structure of a bank? Here I would of course uh, make it clear that I am not talking of any actual specific bank in any real situation, there will be many more complexities involved in an organizational structure. But if you look at this simplified schematically, the structure of the banks, it is begins with the board of directors and the chief executive officer of the bank. These are top management of the bank and what they are concerned with is how do we make our bank profitable, how can it become a good bank, well known, how can we build its brand, how can we uh, give our shareholders, our investors a good return on the investments that they might have made on the, in the bank. So we can see that what they need is strategic information. They need information that will help them make decisions that will have an impact over the next five, seven, maybe even more years. So the questions they will ask will be of a certain kind. Then think of middle management. Middle management is perhaps you have a bank which uh, has branches in many parts of the country and you have divided the, those branches into or grouped those branches into different regions. For example, uh, if the bank is a national level bank, then you would have regional heads which might be based on say the northern region, southern region, eastern region, central region, western region or maybe even more. These people are concerned with how their region performs and for that they need information about how branches as a group in their region are doing. So they may want to know what is the total uh, deposit uh, growth or the total deposits in my region. We will come to those details a bit later. And finally we have at the lower level, at the base level, the branch manager of every bank. He is the person who is in charge of the bank. He has to make sure that on a day to day basis, the branch is performing well, that customers who use the services of that branch are happy. The staff who work in the bank are happy in their jobs and 
at the same time that he is able to meet the corporate objectives of the bank. That means more deposits, more loans and so on. So you can see that all these different levels are going to require information which is of a different level of detail. So let us come back to the top management or the board of directors or the chief executive officer of the bank and let us look at the kind of information they would need in more detail. This is strategic information which has a time frame or a perspective of five, seven, maybe even more years. It is a long term planning and execution that they are concerned with. So they will need to know how do we grow, how do we get more customers, how do we increase our revenue, how do we increase our profits, how do we give better returns to our shareholders. And to do that, should we have more branches? If yes, where do we open those branches? Should they be in the cities where there is a lot of potential but there is also a lot of competition? Or should we try to strike out to the smaller towns where banking is not penetrated so much? Or should we really go out to the rural areas and mobilize the savings of people in the villages which perhaps they are not keeping with the banks today? Which parts of the country should be open branches? Or instead of all this, should we just use technology such as internet banking, mobile banking and other ways, innovative ways to draw or to drive customers to use us, to use our services. Uh, should we even have banks in other countries? Supposing we expand out of this, uh, out of India, will there be a demand for our services? Because as you can see that is one more way of achieving growth. Or should we try to buy some other bank, some smaller bank which might want to be selling itself? For each of these decisions, information is needed. Without getting into nitty gritties or detail, the decision of where to open a branch will depend on one's estimate of what will be the cost of running a branch every year in that place. This information would be available from the data that the bank already has over the past years. They can know that, okay, if I want to open a branch in a small town, what is the typical cost of running it for a year? But what is the potential? So here they might look at information such as the population of that town, the kind of economic activities that are happening there, the kind of uh, receptiveness people would there have in, uh, in banking. Do they prefer, would they like to uh, park their money with the bank, would they like to get loans from the bank or the, are they still going to rely on traditional sources. And similarly for all these other decisions that we talked of, they would want other information. For example, if you want to see whether we should push or uh, propagate technology based solutions, then we have to see what is the number of people who might actually use such solutions. How many transactions are today happening through these kind of avenues? And uh, will the people have enough technology capability in the sense would they be able to use these kind of technologies easily? How can we make it more simple? Now let us look at the kind of information that middle management, the regional branch heads, the heads of regions might need. They need tactical information, information that will help them plan for the next one, two or three years over the medium term. 
they will not have to worry so much about the entire bank, but only about their regions. So they would like to uh, decide how to meet their targets for the region. How do we grow our deposits? How do we give out more loans so that we can profit? What kind of loans are profitable? What kind of loans would people be interested in? Should it be gold loans, housing loans, personal loans, or some vehicle loans, or some other kind of loans? Do we need to think up of some new kind of loan that people might uh, want us uh, want to take, want to avail of? When it comes to deposits, should we look for savings deposits? Should we look for fixed deposits? Should we try to design some other avenues? In my region, can I sell mutual funds? Can I sell insurance? Can I sell some other product? How can I lower my costs? Should I open more ATMs in my region or should I reduce the number of ATMs? If the people are moving towards a less cash economy, maybe I don't need that many ATMs and I don't need to incur the cost of operating and maintaining it. So these are the kind of tactical decisions that regional heads perhaps want to take, need to take. And the information that they would need for this would be correspondingly of a more detailed and lower level than that needed by the board of directors or by the top management. So they would need information on what it costs to run an ATM and they would need to know how much is the actual utilization of that ATM by people, how long does that ATM work in a day on the average. If, if it's a question of loans, do people want housing loans or do they want gold loans? I, this they can try to find out through the past information that is available in the form of various reports to them. And when, uh, if they find for example that there is a lot of demand for gold loans, then perhaps they can expand the staff that is engaged with providing gold loans. They can perhaps make it easier to obtain a gold loan. Here uh, let me also be clear that no organization functions entirely as it wishes. There is always some kind of regulation, some uh, the legal framework, a regulatory framework within which any organization has to function. And in the case of banks, the quantum of regulation is more than many other industries or many other sectors. But within those allowable boundaries, there is a lot of room for innovation and uh, doing uh, things that others are not doing. Finally, let's come to a single branch. A single branch is operated and led by a branch manager. A branch manager might perhaps be interested in knowing how many people visit my branch every day. What transactions do they carry out? How long does it take for a customer to get service at my branch? How much money was deposited and how much was withdrawn? How many loans and of what value are people taking at my branch and of different kinds? How many cashiers should I put on duty today? How many staff members were absent? And so on and so forth. So essentially they need information that will help them run their, run their branch smoothly so that customers who come to that branch feel happy, feel satisfied, feel that they, their business or their work uh, got done in a reasonable time and without any undue difficulty. Similarly, if, even if you, if you go even beyond that, then each employee, each single person at the branch needs certain operational information to do their work and that will be at a still lower level of detail. 
for example, a cashier who is receiving uh, deposits and paying out withdrawals needs to know how much cash he has at any given time so that he does not run short. He also needs to know uh, how much time it takes him to service a particular customer. He would like to be as efficient as possible. So, we have seen that from the perspective of an organization or at different levels, people need different kinds and amounts of information of different levels of detail. And uh, depending on what they require, what decisions they have to take, they require different information. Let us now come to a different, uh, slightly different subject the sources of information. From where does that information come? This is not an attribute of the information. This is not a characteristic of the information itself because it describes where it comes from. Where the information comes from is not a property of the information itself. Essentially, there are two different sources of information and there can be internal or external. Internal information is obtained from within the organization itself through processing of the data. As you know that data when processed gives us information. There can also be external information that is obtained from sources outside the organization. And if you look at the hierarchy of the organization, we will find that typically in general, of course with exceptions, in general, at the lower levels, people need data that is generated internally. And as we go up the hierarchy and as your time frame for decision making increases, the kind of information you need is often obtained from external sources. Like let us look at uh, again at the board of directors of the bank. They want to know whether it makes sense to open more branches in a particular place. For that, they need to know about trends in banking. They need to know whether which places population is growing, which place places there is more entrepreneurial activity happening and people would be in need of loans. They need to know which are the places where people have uh, sufficient savings, but they are not keeping it with banks. They also need to know whether it makes sense to open a bank branch at all. When you come to the regional level, you can see that more and more of the information is coming from internal sources. For example, the profitability of a branch or the amount of loans and deposits in their region is information that comes from within the bank itself. External information comes from typically government data, market research, trade journals and so on. And what are the things that we get to know or want to know from external sources? We would want to, for example, know what are the changes that are happening in regulations, regulatory changes, what are the kind of trends in other banks, what are other banks doing, what are the kind of services being offered in other parts of the world, how is banking changing, which are the industries that are doing well and would presumably have more need for credit and banking services which are the uh, companies or which are the industries that are able to sell more abroad, that is export. They may have need for products that are, have to do with transfer of uh, and receipt of money from abroad. Another very important attribute of information is its quality. We all know that and we all seek 
quality in everything that uh, we use. If you use a pen, we would want a pen that writes smoothly, that is quality. Similarly, information is of good quality when it can be used for taking decisions. If the information is of poor quality, you cannot take decisions based on it and whatever you actions you take are likely to be not going to help you. So, one of the attributes of quality is being accurate. Accurate information is that which is obtained from correct data using the correct process or transformation. As a very simple example, if I want to know the average height of the students in class 6th, I cannot be using the data of the height of students in class 7th. That means, I must use the correct data to produce the information. Similarly, information must be consistent. So, if I am trying to compare revenue of the northern region with that of the southern region, I cannot use the revenue of, of three months or a quarter of the northern region and use it to compare with the revenue of one month of the southern region. So the information should also not change with time. It should not be that today I get some figures and tomorrow they are different for the same item. If that is happening, then naturally uh, I would start to suspect the quality of the information. And the information has to be given to the correct person so that they can decide on the action to be taken. We will be discussing more about this in a subsequent session. Now, let us come to a very interesting concept of the value of information. Does information have value by itself? I would say no. Information does not have any value on its own. Its value comes from the use to which it can be put. If we can use the information and benefit ourselves, then the information has some value. Otherwise, it is more like data. It is just sitting there, but it cannot be put to any use. So, in a business context, when we are talking of say a bank or any other company, information value is the gain that one can get by using it, less the cost of obtaining that information. For example, supposing I am a person who thinks that let me get rich by finding gold somewhere. So, I go to some remote location and start digging and I keep digging and digging and hope that I will get gold, but nothing happens. But there is some other person, my friend who has more sense. What does he do? He goes to a geologist and asks the geologist for data on or information on or a report on where gold might be available. The geologist will give him a report that tells him that this is a place where possibly there might be gold. No guarantees, but there might be gold. So, he digs there and he is able to find gold. However, he did have to pay the geologist some amount of money for the report. So, if he is able to get a crore rupees worth of gold and he had to pay the geologist 10 lakh rupees for his report, then the value of that information was 90 lakhs rupees. Similarly, a person who holds a patent for the production of some product, he holds valuable information because people who use that uh, method for building that product will have to pay him some royalty. So, the information in that kind of a patent has value. Of course, 
the person would have spent a lot of effort and time and money in developing the process that he has patented. That is his cost and the difference between the royalty he gets and the cost he had had to incur is the value of the information in that patent. Some patents are therefore very valuable and there are perhaps a large number of patents in this world that are filed which may not have value because they do not yield something that gives value to the user. So, in this session we have looked at the types of information from the perspective of a commercial organization namely a bank. We saw the different kinds of information that were needed by top management, by middle management and by line management, the low level, low level front line management. We also saw the kind of uh, sources, the different sources of information namely internal sources that come from data being processed within the organization, the data is gathered and processed within the organization and external data which is gathered and made available by different agencies such as the government, market research, trade journals and other organizations. We also looked at what was meant by the quality of information. Quality information is such is one that can be relied upon and that can be used to make useful decisions. Information has quality when it is obtained from the correct data using the correct transformation and processes. And finally, we saw what was meant by information value. It takes some money or some cost and effort to create any information, to create a piece of information. The value of the information is the difference between the benefit that is obtained by using that information and the cost of that information. So, the difference is the value, it is like profit in any other case, the cost reduced from what it gives you, that is the value of the information. And is it that uh, the information value is the same always? No. The value of the information comes from the skill and the use to which the person who receives it uh, makes of it. So, a person may have information but may not make use of it, another person may have the same information and make very good use of it. So, the value of the information depends on not only the information itself, but also on how it is used. So, this is a, a brief introduction to the types and attributes of information. Thank you.